Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short video which is just going to take you through five advantages and five disadvantages of an increase in monetary policy interest rates, and we'll throw in some evaluation points as well. Current situation is that interest rates remain very low across many countries. Central banks around the world decisively cut interest rates during the financial crisis. This was a big monetary policy response. And indeed, interest rates have remained at historic lows for many subsequent years, close to or below 0% in many developed countries. In the UK, the Bank of England has had base interest rates below 1% since 2009. The European Central Bank has kept their main interest rate at 0% for some time. Uh, just in the United States, the US Federal Reserve they have been increasing their interest rates gently in recent times. It's now between 2.25 and 2.5 percent. Good example here of a central bank. This is the effective federal funds rate, their main interest rate, which started to rise in the late part of 2015 from close to zero. It is now rising, as you can see, in series of steps towards 2.5 percent. So here are five economic advantages of a central bank such as the Bank of England, for example, deciding to start raising interest rates. The first argument is that a higher rate of interest might help to control the strong demand for credit, soften the growth of the money supply and therefore help to control demand pull inflation. You should be able to think of an ADAS diagram which might be able to illustrate that. A second advantage was that if interest rates went up, mortgage rates presumably would also increase and that may cause a slowdown in the housing market, a fall in the rate of house price inflation, which, depending on what's happening to incomes and jobs, might help to make property more affordable over time. A third advantage is that if interest rates start going up, that will increase the return to saving money, effectively raising the disposable incomes of people who rely on their savings, including many retired households. The fourth advantage is that if interest rates go up, that tends to reduce the risk of malinvestment. These are investment projects that really only go ahead because of the cheap cost of capital. There's a case for saying that when interest rates are very low, you tend to get investment projects going ahead, which, which they're really only marginally profitable. Perhaps in normal times, they wouldn't happen. Investment money would be better off allocated to more productive investments. And the fifth point is that you might start to raise interest rates now, moderately, like they're doing in the States, so that the central banks have, have the room or have the latitude to cut them again in the, event, in the event of a negative economic external shock. If they're at zero, then there's really no much, not much more room for central banks to cut interest rates. They have to use things like QE and perhaps exchange rate intervention. The housing market is key if you want a couple of stats. The average house price in the UK is now £226,000. Crucially, in 2018, in terms of affordability, the ratio of median house prices to median earnings was 7.8. This makes housing extremely unaffordable for people on average incomes. What are five disadvantages of higher interest rates? What are five downsides? Let me pick out some points for you. First of all, uh, in the UK, there is a very high level of unsecured debt, money on credit cards, money on store cards, money secure, uh, unsecured debt with payday lenders, for example. If interest rates start going up, there is the risk of a significant, <laughs> significant slowdown in consumption if retail credit becomes more expensive. People would just have to pay more interest and they have less to spend on something else. A second point is that interest rates going up could could choke off some investment, some much needed investment. Perhaps there won't be as much new house building. Perhaps there won't be as much investment in renewable, renewable energy if the cost of borrowed money goes up. That would have an effect both on demand and also on the supply side of the economy. The third disadvantage relates to the currency market. Uh, rising interest rates in the UK could cause the sterling exchange rate to appreciate and that makes exports less price competitive, leading perhaps to a slowdown in exports and perhaps a worsening external deficit on the balance of payments. 
fourth disadvantage is that interest rates going up might make government debt more expensive to service, increasing the debt interest payments the government pays, perhaps meaning there's less money for public services, education and health. And the fifth point is that if interest rates go up, that could lead to a more broadly based economic slowdown, falling consumption, weakening investment, for example. And if the economy is making less profit, it's not growing as quickly, uh, that could hit share prices, uh, pension fund assets and dividend incomes. Not everybody has a pension, of course, but many people require they get a source of income from dividends, the profits of companies. Some evaluation points that are worth mentioning. Firstly, in the UK, a very large number of mortgages, perhaps up to 60% of mortgages in the UK, are on fixed interest rates, perhaps for three to five years. So therefore, a change in interest rates has less effect in the short term. Second point, many factors affect the exchange rate. It's not the only factor, interest rates, not the only factor driving the exchange rate. Brexit uncertainty, predicted growth rates, global economics. So the exchange rate doesn't necessarily appreciate if UK interest rates go higher. Third point, an increase in interest rates uh, might actually have a more immediate effect on poor families, particularly if they have unsecured credit, where the rate of interest is very quick to move up if the Bank of England changes their rates. Fourth point, the UK economy is already slowing down. The growth rate in 2018 was only 1.4%. There's a lot of economic uncertainty. You can make a case for saying this is not the moment to be raising interest rates when the economy is already slowing down. And the fifth point is that inflation remains fairly subdued, close to or just actually below target, in part because the natural rate of unemployment has fallen below 5% of the labour force. The economy can operate with lower unemployment than we have at the moment without the need for uh, higher interest rates to control inflation. All things being considered, UK interest rates are likely to remain at less than 1% into the immediate future. But be aware that there are always cases for and against, in this case, higher interest rates.